Hello, I'm Terry Carter with the University of Georgia's Cobb County Cooperative Extension Office, and we're going to be doing a delicious recipe. We've been away for a while, but I'm glad to be coming back and doing cooking demos. So this month for Black History Month, which is February, it's also Valentine's uh, month as well, I'm going to be doing um, a recipe that is directly related to food history. I do a program called the Food History of the South that traces back the history of food. So if your organization is ever interested in doing that, please reach out to me here at the Extension Office at 770-528-4070. So the recipes, we're doing two today. I'm really excited about it. Um, it's going to be a stir-fried cabbage with sausage and shrimp. And then we're going to be doing old-fashioned whole cakes. So both of these recipes are really near and dear to my heart. I grew up um, eating cabbages, but the way my grandmother cooked the cabbage was a bit different than I'm going to be doing today. Most of the time when I was growing up, the cabbage would be cooked in um, water with, of course, some pork in there, but a lot of water. So we're going to stir fry today. We won't need that um, long cooking time of boiling the cabbage. So there, there'll be stir fried in some oil. So let's go ahead on and get started. Now, if you want this dish to be vegan, all you do is leave out the shrimp and the sausage. And the sausage you use is totally up to you. You pick what you like. Um, this one I'm doing today is a jalapeno and pineapple sausage. It's a new one I found at the grocery store. So we're going to start with, first of all, putting our oil in our skillet and cooking the shrimp. And then we're going to remove our shrimp. And then we're going to do the sausage. And then we'll move on to the vegetables. So as I said, if you want this dish to be vegan, just skip this whole process and go directly to your vegetables. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We'll turn our skillet up here. And of course, I'm just using an electric skillet because it's easier to do. But of course, you're doing this at home. You can use your um, stove and your skillet. All right, so let's go ahead and get our shrimp in. And that's about, I would say, maybe a half a pound of shrimp that I'm using, not a lot. Um, you can use as much or as little as you like, OK? So I'm going to start with cooking the shrimp a little bit, and then we're going to remove the shrimp because we don't want um, to leave the shrimp in there. It's going to get way, way too done. And I'm just going to add a little bit of seasoning here. And this is some no salt um, Creole seasoning, one of my favorites, actually. And it will only take just a few minutes for our shrimp to, to cook a little bit. So. Um, the Food History of the South program is all about where our foods came from that are now our traditional foods that we would eat every day. Um, now, cabbage. Cabbage is a very southern thing. And actually, growing up, I really didn't like it that much because of the way that it was prepared. But once I tried it this way, I really love it. And you can put as many um, onions and bell peppers in there as you like. I'm using today one onion. And I use the purple onion because that's all I have. And I'm using a red bell pepper. But you could definitely use red bell pepper, yellow, and um, orange, all three or one. You can use green bell pepper. I just prefer a red uh, a colored bell pepper more so than the green one. It just has a little bit more sweetness to it. All right? So I'm going to toss those. And while the shrimps are cooking, I'm going to go ahead and add in my sausages here on the other side. And I'm going to take my shrimp out here soon as they're ready, but we'll go ahead and let the sausages start cooking here. Um, traditional southern cooking was grown out of a need just for people to eat. It was never fancy, it was never overdone, but it was simple cooking that people needed to get done quickly because if you were working all day, you didn't want to spend um, time in the kitchen. I know I watch a lot of TikTok videos, cooking videos, and I love those TikTok videos, but they do take a lot of time and they do have a lot of um, ingredients. So Southern cooking grew out of simplicity, um, but we can take those simple ingredients that we're used to, that we grew up on, and turn them into something different. And that's kind of what I'm doing here, all right? So our shrimp are almost ready, so we're going to get ready to get those out of here. And this is pretty much a one-pot dish. We're going to do everything in our skillet. And you do want to use a decent size skillet, skillet um, on your stove as well, so you have enough um, space here for everything to cook. So I tried this new sausage, and I'm a sausage connoisseur. Kind of I love them. And this one has jalapenos and a little pineapple. So I went with this 
because I'm not going to add any hot pepper. Normally, I would add a jalapeno pepper here, but I'm not going to add that because we have some pepper in that sausage, and I don't want to overdo it. I don't like um, too, too much heat. So I think our shrimp is about ready, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get those out of here and sit them off to the side, and we'll add these back later on at the end, all right? We're going to let our sausage continue to cook here. And there's no need to clean your skillet out. That um, What's left in here is fine. It's going to add just a little bit of nice flavor to it. So we'll continue on here with our sausage cooking. And I think they're just about ready. And be careful. Um, you don't want to overcook your sausage either because some sausage will say pre-cooked, meaning they're already ready to go. You're pretty much just heating them up. But just read the labels and see if they need to be cooked or not. Okay. So our sausage is almost ready. I'm going to kind of put those to the side. Now, um, what you put in first is totally up to you. I've chopped up my purple onions and my red bell pepper and this is the cabbage and I went ahead and did everything ahead of time. I did everything yesterday. So if you're making this dish, you can go ahead and start to prep it. I love prepping ahead of time. You can start to prep everything and then when it's time to bring it all together, all you have to do is just take stuff like this. I've had everything in the bag, but I took it out of the bag so the presentation was a little nicer. But I did leave the cabbage in here to let you know how I did it. And the cabbage I use is a Taiwanese cabbage. So it's a little bit different. If you look at that, it's a little bit flatter. Most cabbages are more round. This one is a little bit flat. You can see that, how flat it is. And um, it comes a lot bigger. You can get one of these a lot larger. I just opted for a smaller one because I'm not making that much, okay? So Taiwanese cabbage, and why did I choose it? Well, it's just a little bit sweeter. So I wanted to just get that extra sweetness. So think about um, trying that if you have an opportunity, if you find one. And I found mine here at the uh, farmer's market here. And we have quite a few of those. So I think that the sausage is ready, so we're gonna go ahead and remove our sausages now. Now the sausage you use could be um, turkey sausage, it could be apple, chicken. Chicken and apple is a nice combination in sausages now. Um, you can even use a vegan sausage if you wanted to, um, but I just wanted to get some protein in here, so that's why I'm adding um, the meats. So we're going to go ahead now and start to make our cabbage. So I'm going to add just a little bit more oil here because we are stir-frying, okay? So let me get my cabbage that I already chopped up. And I chopped this up pretty thin, not too thick because I wanted smaller pieces. Um, so you can cut this however you want. I have a big piece in there that I didn't mean to, so we're going to take this one out. So I'm going to start my cabbage, and already it's soaked up a lot of that oil, so I'm going to add some more of my olive oil. Now, what oil you um, use is totally up to you. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to start to stir fry that. Now, if you need to add a little water, you can also add a little water if you want to. That'll give you a little steam and it will help it to cook a little faster. So I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to add in my onion. A nice um, Vidalia sweet onion would be great with this as well. It doesn't matter. You can use the purple onion. You can use the Vidalia sweet onion. You can use the uh, white onion. They all have a similar taste, but of course our Georgia Vidalia onion is going to be your sweetest onion of all. And I love using Vidalia onions as well. All right, and so I'm going to go ahead now and add in our red bell pepper. And I'm just going to start to stir. And it's not going to take a long time for this to come together, but be patient because you do want your all of your ingredients to cook. Now, how well you cook this depends on your taste. Now, if you like your cabbages and your vegetables a little bit crunchier, then by all means, you can stop cooking earlier, but if you like them cooked down and wilted a little bit more, then go ahead and continue cooking. It's no right or wrong way to do it. It's totally up to you. Now, as I said, I'm cooking with, uh, with olive oil. You can use any kind of oil you want it. It doesn't matter. And um, also, if you wanted to use 
um, a little bacon at the end of this to top it. You could cook bacon and crumble your bacon on top as well. But we have two proteins here, so I'm not gonna do that today. That'll be a bit overkill, and my boss will be very unhappy, but she's not here today, so I'm getting away with the sausages, okay? <laughs> So it's coming together really well. I like the way it's looking, but for me, I'm gonna cook this a little bit longer. I want mine cooked just a little bit longer than this. Now, as you see, I haven't put any seasoning in here yet, and that's okay. If you're conscious of your salt, then, you know, don't add a lot of seasoning. But because we have our salt-free seasoning, I'm gonna go ahead and start to add some. And really, this salt-free seasoning can take you a long way where you really won't have to add much salt. The good thing about this is because it's salt free, you can add as much as you want, you know, um, and just get it to the taste that you like. It's gonna have a little bit of heat, but not a lot of heat. But so taste as you go, taste as you go. You're the captain of this cooking ship. All right, so I'm gonna add in some garlic powder as well. Oops, I thought I had a shaker on that. Just a little bit of garlic powder only because I'm also adding in fresh garlic. So here's my fresh garlic here, and I recycled this little jar. <laughs> this was a jar that had pimentos in it, so I love recycling and using glass jars over again. So that's my little pimento jar. Okay, so here we go. We're stirring, and we got this turned up pretty high, so we're really getting a good stir fry on this. Now, if you wanted to, you could also add in some soy sauce, um, it's going to change the color if you add in the soy sauce. And be careful with the soy sauce because it does have a lot of salt as well, okay? Now that's looking pretty good to me. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and add in a little salt because we haven't added any salt up to this point, okay? All right, I think that's enough salt. We have pepper here, so I'm going to add in a little of my black pepper. And if you really wanted more heat, you could definitely add in that jalapeno, as much of a jalapeno uh, as you like to give it a little bit more spiciness to it, okay? All right, that's looking really good. I'm gonna let it cook a little while longer, but I think we're just about there. And I have a lot of red pepper here. If, you're, if you like the red pepper, do what I do. Add a lot of pepper and a lot of onion. If you notice, I really didn't measure, but I did use one whole bell pepper, one whole onion, and then about a half of a, a cabbage, which was larger than this one. That's a small one, uh, but I added a, a half of a large one. But if you're cooking for a lot of people, definitely go ahead and, you know, you can make it in batches if you um, have to, but this will go a very long way. And this is a delicious one-pot meal, and it's quick to do. And this is something you can do if you're, you know, a working mom or dad, or, you know, you, you don't want to do a lot. Go ahead and prep everything as I did a day or two before. It'll hold up fine in the refrigerator. And then just bring everything together in less than 20 minutes. I've been at this about 10 minutes, all right? And it's looking good. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead on um, and let's add back in our shrimp. Okay, and let's toss this around for a little while. And then we're gonna add back in our sausages. All right, two, two proteins in this. So this should be a very filling dish, okay? And so if it's not filling enough, we're gonna be making our whole cakes. And I'll tell y'all the story of the whole cake as well if you haven't heard it before. So that's looking really good and tasty. Now, I, I'm not gonna taste this on camera because it's hot, but if it's not, you know, if you need a little bit more seasoning, you know, taste it, add a little bit more seasoning, or, you know, put the salt or hot sauce on the table and let people add their own. All right, so this is done. This is, this is finished. Look at that. Look at that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. And that is what it looks like. A delicious one-pot dish of cabbage, um, shrimp, bell pepper, onion, and my favorite sausage, okay? So we're going to go ahead and sit this um, to the side, and we're going to start on our next dish, which is going to be our whole cakes, all right? So let's get this out of the way. 
And we'll go ahead and bring up this to, let's see, get that going. And we'll make our whole cakes on this. Now, of course, you could use your black iron skillet. You could use your black iron skillet, or you could use something like this. It do, it's totally up to you. Let's get her going here. All right. So I'm going to turn this on. We'll push everything out the way here, and we'll start on our next recipe. All right, so our next recipe, um, easy, easy whole cakes. So whole cakes is basically cornmeal, and back in the day, the enslaved people would use cornmeal, and they really didn't have access at first to like uh, milk and um, buttermilk, so they would just use water. You would use hot water and cornmeal. Um, so we're going to take it up a notch, and we're not going to use the hot water, but you could definitely still use the hot water and the cornmeal to make these whole cakes. So let's get her on here, and let's start to mix it up. Okay, so for our recipe here, we have a cup of self rising flour, which I've measured out here, and we have a cup of uh, self rising cornmeal. Now people get cornmeal mix and cornmeal all confused. Let me try and clarify. You have self rising and then you have plain. Self rising means that the salt and the baking powder and the baking soda has, soda has been added so you already have that rising um, ingredient in there. If it's plain, there's no leavening, no rising of it so you're going to have to add it or else you're going to have your whole cake's very, very flat, which is okay. It's fine with me. I like mine like that sometimes. But you have self rising flour and self rising cornmeal. Both have had something added into it. So I use self rising flour most of the time and self rising cornmeal. Plain cornmeal, you're definitely going to have to add some salt to it. And if you were making this, you would need to add some flour to it as well. So we have that ready to go. And so we have our ingredients here, which is two eggs beaten. And I'm going to go ahead and mix up my wet ingredients together. And here are my eggs <laughs> that I already um, prepared ahead of time. So we have the eggs, and then we have our buttermilk. And we have uh, 3 fourths of a cup of buttermilk. And I'm going to add that as well. All right. All right. And then I'm going to just mix this up a bit here. Get those two mixed. And we're going to add this to our um, dry ingredients here. So let's go ahead and get that in. And when it comes to making whole cakes, there are a lot of different ways to make it. There's no one right or wrong way to do this. And we have a half a cup of water. We're going to add in our water as well. All right. And then my grandmother, whenever she was making cornbread, she would always add in a little bit of oil to the cornbread as well. Uh, I don't know why, but this recipe I'm using also called for some of that oil to be added, added in here. So I'm going to add a little bit of that as well here. Here's my oil. OK, so we have the griddle ready to go. And oftentimes, she would make um, cornbread in an iron skillet. And I love using my black iron skillet as well. But today, we have um, this, which is very nice. And hopefully, we won't get much sticking going on here. So I'm going to add a little bit more oil in here. And just a little bit here. You don't want to add too, too much. All right. OK, I'm going to mix a little bit. And we're going to be ready. I think we're ready here. It's warm enough. And this is going to be delicious. Now, if you wanted to, you could also add some ingredients to the cornbread to make them like a fritter. You could add some corn to it. It could be canned corn. Um, you could add. Um, I'm going to be honest with y'all, I added everything in the cornbread when I made it a couple of weeks ago. I added some black eyed peas, I added some cornbread, I added, I mean, excuse me, I added the black eyed peas, the corn, and collard greens just to see how the fritter would taste, and it was absolutely delicious. So feel, feel free to add some ingredients in here if you want to. All right, so I think, our, I think we're about ready here. So let's go ahead and start to drop them. And you can make these as small or as large as you like, OK? I'm going to go with some that are pretty small. I don't want to get them too big to start out, because we don't know how much they're going to rise. OK, 
I'm going to fill this up with as many as I can. Now, I don't use Jiffy. Now, I know a lot of people like Jiffy, and that's your business. I don't like Jiffy, and you could use Jiffy if you really, really wanted to to make this, but it's just so easy just to make a good old-fashioned cornbread, you know, from scratch. And the thing is, you know, I want people to learn how to cook from scratch, so try it this way first, but if you, you know, say, oh, I want some and I'm feeling a little lazy today, you could use, you know, a, a pre-made cornbread mix. And that's about all I think. Well, I think I can get one more tiny one in here. So you see um, how these lend themselves well to that dish. You're going to have a nice little snack to go with it. And you just want to watch for these to start to bubble a little bit around the edges. Let's see here. I'll make sure everything has a, enough oil there. So you want to have enough oil so it's not sticking here. Let me see if I can move these a little bit. Oh, yeah. Let's, look, let's see what they're looking like. Oh yeah, see that's what we're looking for. Aren't those pretty? And I can actually see them rising up right now. Um, and you just want to make sure these are cooked through and through. You don't want them to be um, soggy in the middle, okay? I'm going to flip these. Oops. And the story of the word whole cake, let me tell you that. Um, I almost forgot about that. Whole cakes, um, the story is, we don't know that this is necessarily the truth, but um, when the enslaved people were working in the fields, of course had a tool called a hoe, and so the hoe would be used for digging. Well, you could um, take that hoe, because a lot of times, especially in the fall and the wintertime, there would be a fire um, somewhere nearby. So you could take that hoe, clean it off really well, put a little bit of lard on it because they had access to lard and of course we said cornmeal. Take the cornmeal and the lard and some water, mix that together, make a little patty. Once that hole had been cleaned off, you put a little oil on it and then take the hole and hold it over the fire and you would cook a whole cake like this. So hence the name whole cake. That is where that um, story came from. And growing up as a little girl, when my grandmother didn't want to make cornbread in the oven, she would just get the skillet, mix some of this stuff up, and you got your whole cake. And you would eat that until it was gone, OK? My grandfather would take it to work um, the next day because um, lunch for us always started um, actually as lunch, lunch was just really um, what was left over from dinner the day before. So we never made a new lunch. So these will go in, you know, as lunch the next day. So let me turn those over again. They're looking pretty good. And you know, that's why I said I didn't want to get these too big because you see how much they rose. And so with them rising, if we had made them any bigger, they would have been too big. All right. And then if you find that you're, this is too thick, you can always thin your batter out a little bit, which I would do if I wasn't on television. I would thin that out just a little bit, but that's fine. All right. So those are your whole cakes and you have your um, uh, uh, cabbage and your peppers and your onions. And this is really a, a nice meal. It's an old fashioned meal. It's a healthy meal. Everything you need is in there already. So um, I hope you'll try this. And this is a very easy recipe to do. And again, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to reach out to me here at the um, Extension office. We're located at 678 South Cobb Drive, Suite 200. So if you have any questions about food, about cooking, and especially about this recipe, then give us a call. Again, my name is Terry Carter with the Family and Consumer Science Department of the University of Georgia's Cobb County Cooperative Extension. Thank you so much.